Heinrich Himmler was a central figure of the Third Reich from its inception until its resounding fall. Starting in 1925, he was the Reichsführer SS, which was the highest military rank in the entire SS, used exclusively for the organization's commander-in-chief and field marshal. At the same time, he held other key roles as Reichsminister of the Interior, Chief of the German Police and Reich Commissioner for the Consolidation of the German People. He was also one of the main organizers of the mass death camps that were used to carry out what became known as the Final Solution. Although Himmler continued to hold positions of great power until his last months, before the imminent fall of the Nazi Empire, he began to behave more erratically, distancing himself from Hitler, with whom he always had a very close relationship, and even negotiating on his own a peace agreement with the powers of the West that, had it materialized, could have changed history forever. In his final hours, Himmler attempted a futile escape that ended with him sharing the same fate as his Führer. But how were the last months of one of the most powerful and recognized Nazi leaders? And how was his final estrangement from Adolf Hitler? Don't leave your screen, because in the next few minutes we'll tell you everything about the fall of one of the architects of the Holocaust. Born in Munich in 1890, Heinrich Luitpold Himmler demonstrated his desire to be an officer in the German military from an early age. Although he enlisted to fight in World War I, he did not see combat as he belonged to a reserve battalion that did not actively participate in the war. In 1923 he joined the Nazi party and two years later the SS, where he met Adolf Hitler, who appointed him Reichsführer SS in 1929. Although at first the SS forces consisted of a battalion of 290 men, this number grew quickly under Himmler's control. He continued to amass power and influence with the rise of the National Socialist Party in 1933. Slowly, the war that would break out in 1939 began to take shape. During this decade, Himmler remained a central figure, known for his organizational skills and for his interest in occult and symbolic subjects, both of which he introduced to the Nazi police. During World War II, Himmler oversaw the creation of concentration camps, directing the murder of millions of people. At the same time, he had a fundamental role in the advance of the Germanic army towards the east of the European continent. However, by 1945, the German situation in the war was critical. Allied advances on both fronts doomed the Third Reich. The previous year, after the Allied landing in Normandy, Hitler ordered the creation of the Upper Rhine Army Group, which had the mission of stopping the American advance. Himmler was named the Commander-in-Chief. The desperation of the Nazi High Command was evident. A few months later, Hitler ordered Himmler to organize the creation of special army units called People's Storm, where civilians between the ages of 16 and 60 could be enrolled. Finally, even 14-year-olds were enlisted, but these were far from making a difference given the lack of training, weapons and equipment. In January 1945, desperate to stop the American advance, they launched Operation North Wind, with the intention of breaking through the lines of the Allied armies and supporting the last major German offensive of the war, that of the Ardennes despite initial success, this too did not work and at the end of the month the operation ended. Having failed to stop the enemy troops in the west, Hitler tried to do so in the east and appointed Himmler as commander of Army Group Vistula with the task of stopping the Red Army. Not confident in the chances of victory, Himmler complied and settled in Schneidmal, using his special train as his headquarters. Around this time, the behavior of the man who had led the SS to become one of the largest forces in the world became increasingly peculiar. He rarely left his quarters, working just four hours a day, starting each day with a massage session and then a long nap after lunch. At the same time, the train was not equipped for such an important operation, since it only had a telephone line and no radio or adequate maps. It soon became clear that attempts to stop the Soviet forces were futile. Hitler began to blame Himmler directly for those failures. On April 20th these two men would meet for the last time in Berlin on the occasion of the Führer's 56th birthday. Despite the imminent fall of Nazism, the celebration was pleasant and Himmler swore allegiance to his leader until the end. However, he was hiding something from Hitler. For weeks Himmler had been trying to negotiate with the Western Allies, that is, the United States, Great Britain and France. His intention was to make peace with these countries, to close the Western Front and to devote all his forces to repelling the Red Invasion from the East. 
Upon finding out, Hitler declared him a traitor and ordered Himmler to be removed from all charges against him and the Nazi party itself. A few days later, the Führer and his wife Eva Braun committed suicide in their bunker. The strategy and the belated attempt at peace did not even receive an Allied response. Hitler's successor, Admiral Karl Donitz, did not include Himmler in his transitional cabinet, obeying the Führer's last wish. Out of options, Himmler fled to Flensburg in northern Germany, where he remained in hiding for several days. On May 20, as the Allies closed in on the city, Himmler attempted a desperate escape with a small group. He carried identification in the name of Heinrich Hitzinger, shaved off his mustache, donned an eye patch and a secret military police uniform so as not to be recognized. However, the escape plan to the south quickly failed. Two days later, they were rounded up by Soviet soldiers and taken to the British Second Army headquarters in Lüneburg. There, Himmler identified himself with the intention of making a deal with the major in charge of the detention camp. They took him to a doctor for inspection. As he did so, the doctor discovered a black object in the lower part of Himmler's jaw. When he understood what it was, he tried to quickly remove it, but Himmler stepped forward and bit into the cyanide capsule. Shortly after, and despite the attempts of those present to revive him so that he could have a trial and face justice for his crimes, Heinrich Himmler died. He was survived by his wife Margaret and his daughter Gudrun, who, for the rest of her life, upheld Nazi ideology and tried to clean up her father's reputation. We have reached the end of the video and we want to know your opinion, what do you think Himmler's sentence should have been if he had been tried? Leave us your answer below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Also, remember to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to learn about many more military events that left their mark on history. Thank you very much for joining us until the end. And stay tuned for our next video.